Hey, what's going on everybody? Jamie Fenn here. Today, I'm gonna show you how to do this epic Polaroid transition in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Now, if you don't have a video of you holding this Polaroid, I'm actually gonna provide the video that I used in the intro linked down in the description. So feel free to download that. And then all you'll have to do is just import your own footage to transition into and then follow along to this tutorial. If you like videos like this, please make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Comment down below and let me know what you think about this video and give me a good old thumbs up. Thanks. So actually this transition is not too complicated. We just have to do a few basic things first. First thing we want to do is go to the point of right after we flick the Polaroid, or if you have your own clip and you don't flick it, you can just kind of do whatever you want, whenever you want. So I'm going to go to the point right after I flick the Polaroid right there should work well. And that's where we want to start the video to be inside the Polaroid. So over here on the right, we have our other clip that we're going to transition into. I'm going to drag it to the point of the playhead. And then I'm going to come to the end here like that. And I'm going to push B on my keyboard and cut that clip. Just bring it down here for now. Then I'm going to highlight these two clips, right click and select new fusion clip. Next, put the playhead over that fusion clip and then come down to the fusion tab and click on fusion. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is implement some tracking. So I'm just going to disconnect that node here like that and disconnect that node. So now we just have Polaroid clip. I'm just going to rename that POL and then this will be the drone shot drone. So after you select the Polaroid clip, make sure you go to the point in your clip where the video starts that you're going to transition into. Then hold down shift and press spacebar and type in planner tracker. That should automatically drop it in between the median in and output. Then what we want to do is come down and click around the Polaroid, the black part. Then up on the right, make sure you select inspector. This will bring up some tools here for you. We want to set the reference frame to the one we're on. Then we want to come under tracker and select hybrid point area. And then what we're going to do is click on this arrow and track to the end. So now I'm going to do something a little different than I've done in previous tutorials. We're not going to create a plan or transform. We're actually going to come up to this operation mode and instead of track, we're going to click corner pin. That'll bring up four points here like that. And what we'll want to do is come in and put those points just right on the outside of the uh, Polaroid picture. Not the actual Polaroid, but the actual photo inside. That way it looks like we're replacing the photo with a video and it looks proportionate. So just make sure to match those up on the outsides like that. And I typically just kind of go on the outside just a little bit, just so the photo underneath does not show. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is come over and drag the clip that we're going to transition into and attach that to the planner tracker. And now you can see that this is now inside the Polaroid. But the one thing is, is that it is kind of squished. It squished the sides in the fit. So what we need to do is click on the drone clip, hold down shift and press spacebar and type in crop. Then we want to keep centered. So select that in our inspector. And then what we want to do is just expand the X size a little bit until it looks somewhat normal to what the original looks like. So you, you may have to eyeball it. All right, so now we have our fusion comp with our photo inside and it looks something like that. Great. So now we're done in the fusion tab. Let's go back to the edit tab. So let's go up to the effects library and drag in an adjustment clip. And inside this adjustment clip, this is where we're going to do a lot of the effects. So I'm going to just kind of drag the adjustment clip a little bit before and keep it a little bit after just because what we're going to do is add some effects earlier in the clip to kind of sell it more. And let's actually go back into fusion. So now what we can do is add a transform node and we're going to figure out where the spot is, where it transitions. So there's the main change point. And what I want to do is actually keyframe just a few frames before the size and then come up to the point of where it right at the last frame of the Polaroid. And I want to zoom this up and the max is five right now. But if you actually type in a number, I'm going to do like 12. Perfect. Also, what we can do is change the pivot. So if we want this to be more centered, we can do something like that. And let's just bring this down. So now we have something that looks like this. 
but then it stays there because we didn't keyframe the next frames. So it transitions into that. And the next frame, I just want to make actually smaller so it looks somewhat the same size as the Polaroid. We don't want to go too much of a difference. That could work. And then go a few frames out and then keyframe back down the size. So now we have something that looks like this. And it is a little linear and it needs some adjustments, but that's where the spline comes in. So let's come up here to spline, click on that. Click on size. We'll turn off the inspector for now. And now you can see what we have going on for the animation of the zoom in effect. So what I like to do is click on these points and push F to fade them. So now it kind of does something like that. It doesn't, you know, it's not so linear. So it kind of zooms out kind of slow. So what I'm going to do is just actually maybe fade that like this. Maybe give it a little bit more of a curve. And maybe even bring in the zoom a little bit slower. Give a little bit more curve like that. Cool. Okay. And another thing we can do is actually click on transform, come up to the inspector, click on this little second thing that says settings. There's two options up here. And we can actually turn on some motion blur. And now when it zooms in, you can see that it adds motion blur and the higher the number here for quality, the more it's going to blur the image. Sometimes what happens though, if you crank up the quality too high, your computer will just kind of not play it back very well. So I typically like to leave it at two or three because now when we come back here, oh, it actually plays it pretty well. So I wasn't expecting that. So now we have this, which looks pretty good. It looks pretty sweet actually. We could make it a little bit faster, but just for this example, I'm just going to do that for now. So the next thing that I did to sell this effect was add a little bit more uh, motion blur. And I came up to the effects library, clicked on open effects and dragged in the zoom blur. I came up to the inspector and I'm going to click on open effects. I'm going to keyframe some zoom strength here real quick. So when it starts to zoom in just one frame, I click on the keyframe and the blur strength, I want it to be the highest at the furthest point of zoom, which will be there. And what happens when you crank up the smooth strength is that the video on the outside starts to show and it's kind of goes black if you look closely here. And we don't want that. So in order to get rid of that, we can come down to border type and you can select replicate or reflect. For this situation, I'm just going to use replicate. See how it nice, it's nice and clean now. So now we have that. Now we need the keyframe, the smooth strength on the way out. So right about here, let's do a few frames, turn that back down all the way to zero. So now we have something that looks like this. Great. Looking pretty sweet, don't you think? All right. So the next thing we want to do is one more thing, which will really sell this effect. And that's come up to the effects library. And we want to scroll down to resolve transform and select camera shake and drag that on top of our adjustment clip. So what I want to do is just adjust some of the camera shake parameters to kind of give it a little bit more of a visual uh, aesthetic, as you would maybe say. So I'm going to come up here to the inspector on the open effects, and I'm going to come down to camera shake, double click on it. And the main two things you may want to mess with since there's a ton of options here are just the motion scale and speed scale. And what we're going to do is we're going to animate some of these together just to kind of get the effect that we want to get. So by default, they're pretty high. It shakes the camera a lot. So I'm actually going to turn these down and I'm going to basically just kind of turn this up to those numbers just to kind of see how it looks. And you can't really see there is a little bit of camera shake, not really too much, but I'm going to come right to the point about, I don't know, 20 frames before, and I'm going to animate the speed scale. So I'm going to keyframe the very beginning of the adjustment clip, both of these, I'm going to turn them down to make them zero. So there's no effect. 
And then at this point, I want some camera shake. So I'm going to keyframe again. And then I'm going to come to the point of the transition where it's the most. And I'm going to turn this up just like so. Now you can see my numbers. So this is what it's going to look like. And it doesn't really have that much of an effect. So I'm going to come back to the keyframes I just made and crank these up maybe a little bit more and see what happens. There, now we have like a little micro jitter right before the transition. And then it happens. And yeah, it looks, looks pretty good actually. Look how this is actually turning out to be super cool. So one thing that you have to keep in mind when you add the camera shake is that the camera shake by default will kind of zoom into crop. And what happens is it'll jump in size. So if you go back and forth between the first frame of the adjustment clip and the frame that's not affected right before. If you look here, I'm going back and forth with my arrow keys. It kind of jumps in size. And that's because if you come down under the adjustments in the adjustment clip for the camera shake. So if you come under blanking and handling, you'll actually want to turn down the zoom to crop. And then it won't change the size on one frame. It'll just keep it looking nice and smooth. And also for border type, you may want to select replicate just so that way if it does shake a lot and the camera starts to move the frame and you'll see a black background, you'll want to have one of these selected. All right, another thing that we can do to kind of sell this effect a little bit more is to speed ramp the clip that we're going to transition into. So what we can do is click on that clip that we're transitioning into, right click on it, come up to retime controls, and then just go to, you know, maybe, I don't know, a few frames here, maybe like a second and click on this down arrow and add speed point. Then you'll click on this top option here. There's two options, there's the bottom and the top here. Click and drag that in like that. And then what you'll have is like kind of like a sped up, speed ramped kind of transition added in between. So now when you go, it'll look like that. So that's the final result. And if you guys want to play around with like the camera shake or the zoom settings, I showed you how to do that in the spline. And hey, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys haven't subscribed already, please do so. Comment down below. Let me know what you think and give this video a thumbs up if you like it.